Hello, this is a video uh, intended for those who want to construct their own welded mesh rabbit run. Now, part of the reason for doing the video is because I found that in doing research there wasn't much information about how to do this and I didn't really know what to do or what to choose. So this is a mixture of still slides and real video talking you through how we went about building ours. The first thing we did was trying to figure out what materials to buy. So the whole thing is constructed from a welded wire mesh product. We chose a galvanized finish, which means that it won't rust over time. The galvanization will change color. It'll go from a bright silver color to a dark gray, but it fundamentally won't rust. For our supplier, we chose this company, FH Brundle. have no connection with them whatsoever. Just pick their name out of a search engine. But they've been really good. They phoned me up when there was a slight delay in the order. Um, they delivered kind of next day. Brilliant company as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Off one order. So when you're choosing your mesh there are effectively three things to consider. One of them is the size of the holes of the mesh itself. We chose two inch by two inch. The main reason for this is because it keeps the price low. Uh, there's less metal in a 2 inch by 2 inch compared to the smaller gauges. Also is that if you ever put it on the ground underneath the rabbits then there's less chance of their feet becoming entrapped like a snare because there's a lot of space between. If you do have small animals like baby guinea pigs they can escape through holes 2 inch by 2 inch. Um, and also there are some people who are worried about snouts of foxes and things getting through. But to be honest lots and lots of people use 2 inch by 2 inch and it's fine. The next main, the, probably the main consideration even before the size of the mesh is what gauge of wire to use. For most of our construction we chose 2.5mm 12 gauge wire. Now this is really robust enough for rabbit runs, it, it was absolutely fine. And we made an 8x3 main run and you needed really the 2.5mm 12 gauge wire to keep the lid of the run rigid and the long 6 foot long sides. For the tunnels we could have easily got away with a size down, so 10 gauge which is about 2.5 millimeter. You'll see me referring in points to a thinner gauge mesh that we put on the floor. We did actually use a 16 gauge which is 1.3 millimeter squared I think um, on the floor of a lot of the tunnels and that was just that was too thin to be actually useful to actually shape anything. Um, the third thing that you need to consider is the size of the sheet that you buy. What you really, really want to do is in your design minimize the amount of cutting. So the reasons for that is one, that cutting is hard, but also that when you have paint of some form to stop it rusting. So if you can do what we did, which was design a six foot long by three foot wide run based on basically six by three and six by four sheets, then you only have to cut them down the middle once or twice um, and you don't have to cut around the edges and you don't have to prepare the edges. So think about the whole size you want, the gauge size of the wire and then the actual size of the, of the sheets that you use. Um, I'll hopefully put the net designs for the sheets we use. The mesh when it arrives arrives in a massive cardboard box. Um, they were pretty friendly, um, brought it around the back of the house for us. We cut it open and inside were many sheets of wire mesh. Uh, we didn't. Get Once you've got the mesh Hopefully you'll have a design that you're going to work to and you'll need to think about cutting it up. For most of our cuts we actually used some side cut hand pliers. On the 2.5mm material these were really too lightweight for the job. We ended up blunting them quite a lot and we had to sharpen them once or twice. But what this did give us was a cut that was nice and close to the horizontal when we were cutting on the vertical. What we actually found was that using a different tool, some bolt croppers, was much more effective in cutting the metal. So I think ideal would have been some side cut bolt croppers, but we didn't have those. Um, so as I say, we used the hand side cut cutters. Um, once we had cut the mesh off, uh, what we were quite keen to do is, both for our safety and the safety of the rabbits, was to file down the edges to make the edges smoother. So on every single cut we made, we spent a moment or two filing down that sharp little point that the snip cutters made. Once the piece was cut into shape, we then had to bend it down. Um, we did achieve this by sandwiching it between two pieces of wood and then smacking it with a hammer. Nothing more 
more cunning than that. The mesh we used was 2 inch by 2 inch, um, which meant that if you position it on planed 2 by 1 wood, that means it's a quite a suitable former size for the bends that you want to make. Now our mesh was slightly unusual compared to a lot of commercial designs that are out there in that we built a basket into the bottom of most of the pieces. The basket is primarily there to support some kind of weight. We had anticipated using decorative stones of some form. You'll see at the end of the video that we actually use bricks. But when you build a mesh run, a principal concern is that predators like foxes would come and just lift the run up because they're quite lightweight. So you really want to peg them down in the ground with tent pegs, but that's a bit of a faff. So we built this basket into the edge of all of our pieces to fill with stone of some form to weigh the run down. Um, what that also meant was that the bend itself gives the piece quite a lot of rigidity so that if you're using a relatively thin mesh um, the panel will actually stay in more of a straight line than it would if it was just a straight cut piece. Um, we built a large run and several tunnels. You'll see the corner of the run we've actually folded over some pieces of metal. Um, now that overlap pro provides a little bit of a safety net in terms of if the joint ever comes undone the rabbits are less likely to escape because the pieces have to come quite far apart before the rabbit comes out. It also has another feature in that the top piece we made from the same physical size sheet of mesh as the side pieces. So the top piece you'll see later on we fold it over to make a lip so the lid is in a U shape a bit like a casserole dish of some form. Um, but in order to make the side smaller we need to lose some length in it and it's easier to bend the side round on both ends to make it lose two squares of length than it is to cut it off and finish it in the same way that we saw with the files. Um, this is a top view of the same side piece, just that the end is bent round. And at the bottom there you can see the basket that I spoke about, which will weigh, thing, weigh the thing down with. Flooring. We decided that on the bottom of our pieces we would um, put a thinner gauge wire mesh in so that the rabbits couldn't dig their way out. And most people when they're using runs will actually attend their rabbits and, and watch them to stop them escaping. We want to add this onto a hutch so the rabbits can go out and have a run around whenever they like. What you're looking at here is actually one of our tunnel pieces, so it's a pretty standard tunnel size. Um, with the basket, see the side that we mentioned for filling with wire, uh, sorry, for filling with some kind of stone or weight. Now a little bit of a closer view. We chose um, a sizing which matches a commonly available commercial product, um, both for future compatibility and also because it seemed to make sense in terms of um, the rabbit run the rabbits that you might want to put inside the run. Um, so this particular piece, I think it, you need to look it up. I'll put all the things at the end. I think it's five wide um, and it's 18 across. I remember that much. So I think there's there's seven squares on each side of the arch and then two squares on each side of the basket. Anyway, we were talking about flooring. Um, that's a piece of much thinner gauge mesh for the flooring. And you'll see that we attach the flooring to the bottom of the run using a particular sort of fixing clamp. Now these are the sorts of fixing that we decided to use for this project. Um, top left we've got some releasable cable ties. They're very very cheap. We paid about three pounds for a hundred. Uh, top right is a springlock carabiner. We bought four millimeter carabiners. You'll see later on that we use those as a safety net connection 
Um, so the actual the ratchet connections are the, are the primary means that we're going to connect the components together. But the carabiners are just provide a safety net in case the ratchets ever got, come undone. So we've chosen to use releasable cable ties, which we've cut down a bit for all the corner joints. In general, where we think it needed two, we'd put an extra one on to make it three. As you can see, the corner pieces overlap and these trenches for stones and we've used bricks to hold the thing down. Um, we've laid a thinner gauge mesh on the ground um, and where the tunnels join the main body we've also used some four millimeter carabiners that's just if for any reason they chew through the ratchet ties there'll be something there to stop the tunnels coming away. At the bottom of the screen there you see a fencing clip. Now that's a galvanised clip that comes like that and you fold it round in on itself to make a permanent connection. Um, most of the pieces are connected together with that. So we're going to use these fencing clips to join the base to our tunnel section. Um, so we have the lighter gauge mesh as the floor um, and that will make the tunnel one unit and the rabbits can't burrow away. So the fencing clips can be put on with a special tool, but the tool's quite expensive. Um, so we are just going to add them in using um, some electrical crimps. Um, anything with this circular shape should close these fencing clips up successfully well. Just go in and then each of the leaves one by one just folds round. Round again. Finally down. That leaves a pretty solid um, fencing clip termination which isn't going to come off by itself. In our rabbit run we have various doors and bits and pieces. Uh, the doors are fundamentally three squares by three squares which means they're six inch by six inch. You'll see once they're cut off um, there are little stubby bits of wire there we took a lot of care to file those down a lot so that there's no chance that the rabbits would catch themselves on it. Um, you'll also see at the end that we painted the whole product um, to further reduce the chances of sharp edges. In this picture you'll see that we've used a piece of pipe to create an additional feature for the rabbits to run through. That's six inch land drainage pipe um, which is a perforated um, tubular plastic pipe as you can see. This arrangement for the um, hole where the pipe goes actually works very very well so if anyone wants to use this style of pipe definitely cutting this shape work. Um, the land drainage pipe again you can see we've ratchet tied it on um, and hopefully that should hold pretty well. Paint, we've mentioned painting we're using a galvanized steel product that means it's a steel wire that's been hot dipped in zinc now when you bend it in the way that we have, as shown here, quite often on the corners the galvanised zinc coating will flake off and that means you have the steel underneath exposed. Also wherever you snip it, you fundamentally re you're revealing the steel at the core. So we bought some hammered finish metal paint, a uh, very very nice product, we got it from the same supplier we got the metal from. Uh, this just dipped onto the ends of the cut metal and across any pieces that we prepared and finished it in a nice smooth dull grey steel. Once you've cut out your various parts, bent them into the shape you need and dabbed the snipped edges in paint and painted on the corners where the zinc's flaked off. We have lots of bits and pieces that you can put together to make a rabbit run. I hope you find the video helpful. I certainly found it quite hard finding information about this sort of thing when I tried to do some research. Um, all I would say is very good luck to you. Don't try this sort of project if you're not very handy, but if you are used to just kind of working with your hands and doing snipping and bits and pieces, it is quite simple. It just might take some time. Um, but uh, good luck. The finished product I'm really, really happy with um, and is really nice. So um, yeah, do it. Go for it. Cheerio.